one of the things I absolutely love about uh, doing this YouTube channel is the um, the conversations that I have afterwards with people in the um, the remarks section below the video. And uh, you know, as much as I kind of research my videos and try and give you the best information, of course, I'm not going to know everything. And um, there's some real experts in the various things that I talk about. So it's just really interesting to to kind of learn from people and um, where possible I do try and re reply to the comments um, it's not always possible I'm sure you understand it I'll be there all, all, all day trying to reply to comments but um, that's kind of where today's video has come from it's based on uh, a couple of videos that I've done recently where I've then had some really interesting conversations afterwards uh, to either clarify some points or some points have come up that I had no idea about So um, I'm just waiting for Sarah to come back. She's um, She's been in the, the Leaf today and uh, she's got a long journey this evening. So we're going to swap cars, which is why I'm sat in my um, my Mazda. Uh, but I am parked up. Look, there she is, waiting for me to get in up. And uh, I can then do the second part of this video, which is um, I need to go somewhere to kind of have a little drive around and show you what I'm talking about. But more about that in a minute. The first thing I want to talk about is the new Nissan Leaf and the range that it can do. Now, I've had a message from, uh, it's actually another YouTuber, uh, his channel's called Fancy Abev, mate. He, he's a taxi driver that's ordered the, the new Nissan Leaf. Uh, he's gonna use it for his work. Now, because he drives a phenomenal amount of miles every year, every little saving that he can eke out of that car is gonna be good for him. So he's come across a, an article, which I'll, I'll link to for you to have a look, that looks at the range the difference between if you have a 16 inch wheel and the 17 inch wheel now the 17 inch wheel comes on the techno which here in the uk is the top of the range one and the 16 inch wheels come on the lower models uh, the this is based on the um is it the wltp ratings which uh have kind of become the the industry standard i think we can more or less certainly compared to some of the old ones, rely on what they're saying. That, that's the amount of miles that your EV can do per charge in the real world. And it's kind of starting to prove itself now. Um, the difference between a 17 inch rim and a, uh, a 16 inch rim is, I think, quite, quite significant. So they have given, let me make sure I give you the right figures. I've got them here ready to go. So on a combined uh, driving cycle, so town and motorway, etc. On a 17 inch wheel, they're saying that you can get a range of 168 miles, which I think is quite good. This is a new 40 kilowatt leaf. On a 16 inch wheel, it's a range of 177 miles. So in kilometers, that's 270 kilometers for 17 inch, 285 kilometers for 16 inch. Now that's nearly 10 miles difference per charge, which, um, is quite significant I'd say that's especially if, you know for him it's his, his livelihood every time that you you charge up you're gaining a best part of 10 miles uh, that's that's massive that's um that's a real difference and whilst I like really do like the look of the um the 17 inch wheels on the Technum um, spec uh, actually is that worth 10 miles every time hey back in my leaf and comfort at last now I'm trying to get to um, the other side of town. I'm in a place called Dorchester, which is um, really convenient because it should illustrate my point quite well. I hope it does anyway. But I'm hoping to get to this, the area I want to get to before the light goes so that you can actually see what I'm talking about. Um, and this, this part has come about because of the, uh, the video I did about uh, autonomous driving. Or as it was pointed out to me, do you actually drive an autonomous car? Absolutely not. But. Um, that's not the point. The point is, uh, I spoke about how I think in 10 years time, we will be driving, or we will be in cars that can uh, take you autonomously uh, on places like motorways, dual carriageways, where the roads are, are very, very defined. There's a, a very clear set of rules, no matter where you are in the country. And so long as that road network has uh, the, the markings that it should have, then, uh, the vehicle and the software and the hardware should be able to read it and should be um, very very safe at uh, moving you around on that network. Where I said I think it would be much more difficult is in uh, rural, rural areas uh, and uh, sort of housing estates and places where it, uh, it isn't as obvious to the vehicle uh, how to um, 
position itself and move itself around. And whilst I think, yes, probably one day that will be possible, uh, I have some reservations whether that would happen within the next 10 years. Uh, if it did, I think it would be very, very expensive and um, very difficult to for somebody like me to, to ever own. Uh, I think one of the key areas to it actually is not just about the, the vehicle working independently, so using whether it's GPS, uh, LiDAR, uh, you know, cameras within the car, I think the vehicles are going to have to actually talk to each other. And uh, where I'm going to take you now is a place called Poundbury. Uh, now Poundbury has been built on the outskirts of Dorchester over the last sort of 20 years. It's uh, actually it's, it was the brainchild, I guess, of Prince Charles. It, it was his land. He's come up with the idea, and the the kind of the very basic philosophy behind it was that if people from different classes and backgrounds and um, all kind of live together, they're not separated into different areas, then that will make a nicer community, uh, and as such, the community will grow and people will get on well uh, and just promote a really nice way of life. There's also this uh, cohesion that they're trying to get with vehicles and people. And the way they've done that, uh, and this is where I'm going to show you, is it's not like a road lay layout like you would see anywhere else. The road layout is very much um, non-existent and the idea behind that is that you have to drive more cautiously, a lot more slowly, because you never know where a car might come from next. Um, let's get there and I'll show you. Now I think this road in particular probably highlights what I'm trying to say uh, in the best possible way. Now as you can see a lot of the, the, this area is still being built even 20 years later but um, you'll see that although this is a very long straight road leading up to where some of the, uh, sort of the uh, shops and things are up here uh, there are no road markings there's cars parked left and right actually you know a um, the correct technology you could probably get an autonomous car to drive here but as we get close to the shops what you'll see is that the the areas where the um, the roads converge <clears throat> so crossroads etc actually there are no markings at all so here's here we are so you see there's uh, no giveaway signs there's no um, uh, information signs we've got uh, this is kind of treated as a roundabout but there's no point and where you can see where the roundabout starts and ends. Uh, I just know that if the cars are coming round, I'm gonna let them round. There's a car coming from the right here, from obviously the, the wrong side of the roundabout, but um, that's absolutely correct. There, there's absolutely nothing here to tell you who has right away and um, who should be doing what at the, what time. When you come back round and go back out onto the main road, you'll see again that the complexities of it that this is so far removed from anything else you'll see on the road and I'm sure there's other places in the country that do similar but how do you program a car to understand this how do you program a car to see that uh, keep left arrow but know that that's a roundabout that I don't actually have to go around and I can just turn right here there's cars coming from my left um, although I gave way when I was coming up there I'm now going to give way to them because actually it looks more like they're on a main road from where I'm coming from now, if that makes sense. So all these calculations I'm making in my head, an autonomous car would have to do also with its software. But unless the autonomous cars can talk to each other, then how do they work out who does what? So there's, there's massive developments that have to happen before cars are going to be in a position where they could deal with road systems like that. There's another junction here that is quite similar. You'll see the road, it looks like we're going to drive straight into this house, but actually this house or commercial premises is being built in the middle of the road. So we've got here four roads converging on each other. Not a single one has any giveaway markings or signs to tell you what to do. And um, although I feel like I'm on the main road, actually as demonstrated before, so could anybody else coming from anywhere else. So you really do have to slow down at every junction and just drive very carefully around here. And that runs into this next bit. You'll see this, um, I think it's a bakery actually. It's a very nice bakery. But again, am I on the, do I have right of way? There's uh, junctions on the left and right. I have to kind of drive around this. It's not a roundabout, it's cars on coming. Uh, 
how, what calculations will an autonomous car do here? What will it decide? Who's got right away? How does it work its way around here? You know, the, again, you look at these posts, this looks like I'm going over a pavement. It looks like if there's pedestrians, do they have right away there or do I because I'm going on what I thought was on a main road. It's really, really interesting to me. That's really interesting about how a car will make those calculations and how will, you know, is that something that we can do in the next 10 years? Is that something that software and hardware can be produced to allow cars to drive seamlessly around here without having to worry. Now I'm hoping that's kind of highlighted the point to you in a much better way than I could just explained it. And um, again, if if you know a little bit more on the, the, the topic, then feel free to put some comments and um, maybe there there is something in the pipeline. Maybe people are developing things to overcome that exact kind of situation. But I find it really interesting and yeah, I'm really for uh, autonomous vehicles and I really do think they're going to make a difference in the future but I, I personally feel that we are still quite a long way away from them being fully autonomous to the point where we don't even need to put a steering wheel in the car. Well that brings today's video to an end and um, because of this very cold weather and Sarah's got a slightly heavier right foot than me, uh, she's given me this car with no charge so I'm going to pull into this charger here, get myself topped up and um, bring the vlog to an end. So hopefully you've enjoyed it today. If you have, remember to uh, like and share. And if you're not doing so already, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you again very soon. Take care.